Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, your favorite subreddit, where people think they're more deserving than others, and rich, spoiled brats think they're above the law. Guys, I promise you, today's lineup of stories is absolutely crazy. So sit back, relax, and get ready to shake your heads. Subscribe if you haven't. Email link will be posted right here for story submissions. Okay, so how to even begin with this? Now, I realize that on paper, I'm totally the entitled a-hole in this one. But when you dig deeper into my motivations, I'm hoping it's more of a gray area than anything else. And maybe I even did the right thing. So when I was a teenager, my dad bought me a classic 1972 Ford Bronco. It was my true passion, and I don't recall a memory from high school that doesn't somehow involve that truck. Plus, my dad and I would spend hours and hours working on it together, and we went through that father-son rough patch when I was a teenager, and it was always that Bronco that brought us back together. I made a huge mistake and I sold the truck when I turned 19, and my dad died of a heart attack two months later, so while not logical, I've always felt a karmic connection between the two events. So fast forward to present time. We had a baby in early February. She's our first and she's the light of my life. My wife is doing well, but she's back at work and she's realized that she hates all the daycares we've tried and really wants to be a stay-at-home mom. Plus, she's still very hormonal from delivery, lack of sleep, and breastfeeding, so she's having a rough time and she's angry a lot. I guess I need to say this. So two weeks ago, I was driving through our town's warehouse district, and I saw a Bronco that was pretty beat up, but it resembled mine. I stopped for nostalgia's sake, and the owner comes out and he lets me take a look inside. My dad and I had glued a wheat penny under the dash as a sort of security measure, so I just sort of checked it, and I'll be damned. It was my Bronco. I asked him if he'd consider selling it, and he said, actually, someone's on the I-25 as we speak, from Colorado, to buy it for $21,000. Upon hearing that, I freaked out, and I asked him if I could buy it right then and there for $23,000. He said if I could come up with the cash, then yes, it would be sold to me. I had been procrastinating, setting up a 529, so I had $12,000 in savings that my wife's parents had given us. I then maxed out my credit card to Venmo, and then my mom bought a check down for $4,000, and I drove away in my old car. It was like a dream come true. Like, a literal dream come true. It does need a lot of work that I can't afford right now, but it's mine. Like, in my driveway, mine. Again, I can't even describe what a joy this is. Now, my wife and her parents are furious with me. They feel I was deceptive, that a real man would have sacrificed anything and everything so my wife could go stay at home with his kids, and that they gave us the money for a college fund. I argued that my daughter is only 6 months old, and we have 18 years to set up a college fund, and I promise that we'll have enough for savings. But this Bronco means everything to me, and if I wouldn't have acted, it would have been gone forever. Now it can be that same connection between me and my kids. To me, it's the literal meaning of happiness. Like I said, on paper, I'm an entitled a-hole. Whole story, gray area. How do you guys see it? Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think there's a gray area here. I'm voting OP an entitled a-hole for this. Like, he literally blew all their savings that her parents gave him. And then he puts the family in debt for what he wants. Not to mention he's a horrible haggler. Like, guys, I'm all in for sentimental things, don't get me wrong. But when you put your family in debt, and now your wife might have to continue to work when she could be home taking care of the kids for what you want, yeah, there's no gray area. That's 100% the a-hole. So listen guys, OP does come back with an update, which I personally kind of feel makes things a little bit worse. He says, So I had no idea that this would go this way. I guess I messed up. So I talked with my mom, and she's basically gonna buy the Bronco from me in order to refill the college fund and pay off the credit card. The $4,000 will be a gift that she's going to give me to do whatever I need to restore the Bronco. She's always been awesome to me, and she'd rather the money be spent now than have me wait for me and my sister's inheritance. Sorry to get everybody so mad at me. I was thinking with my emotions and acted badly. So yeah, I don't think having mom bail him out makes the situation any better. Like, mom had to unnecessarily spend money buying the car with money from him and his sister's inheritance. So essentially, he's stealing from his sister to pay for stealing from his daughter, right? And at the end of the day, he still gets to keep the truck. So basically, mom bailed him out and basically gifted him a truck.
Hey Fluff, I wanted to submit an entitled story. After hearing the last story you read on the channel about a psycho Karen attacking an 11 year old at the movie theater. This story doesn't involve me, I just saw what happened. So we get to the theaters a few minutes before the preview start and we choose our seats. It's a packed theater. After the previews had started and right before the movie was to begin, an older man comes in with a lady, who was his much younger girlfriend. Mind you, the theater was completely full at the time, except for those crappy seats all the way near the screen where you basically have to look up to watch the movie. The two start walking over to where I was kind of sitting. He then approaches the man who was sitting in an aisle seat two away from me, and the man says out loud, Hey, this is my girlfriend's favorite seat. Would you please move? Now everyone around just watched as the man basically was gesturing for the guy to move. The man just looks at him, smiled and said, Huh. I'm glad to know these are good seats. We also like them, and I believe since we're already sitting here, we'll just stay here. At that, the old guy sputtered and started to protest, saying there's no way he and his girlfriend are sitting in those seats all the way in the front. The guy then cuts him off and said, Sir, unless you can present me proof that you own this theater, we're not moving. You came late, so it's your fault. Now if you'll excuse me, the movie's about to begin, and I plan on watching it. The old man then scoffs at him, and he and the girlfriend just left the theater. They didn't even bother to stay. <laughs> that is so ridiculous, guys. You know, sometimes I'm actually shocked at the level of confidence that these self-entitled people possess. It's actually amazing that somebody could actually be that entitled to even ask a question like that to a complete stranger, and then expect that stranger to physically get up and move. Like, I wonder what the heck his girlfriend was thinking after that. Super duper cringe move, sir. Okay, so I'm a middle school teacher, and I have to tell you about the most entitled thing I've ever seen. On this day, I was standing outside the school doing after-school supervision, while parents came and picked up their kids. I was standing on the sidewalk as cars pulled up and children hopped inside to go home. And then it happens. An 8th grade boy steps forward when he saw his 18-year-old brother stop the car at the curb. Their mother was in the passenger seat. Immediately, the boy opens the door and he orders his mom to do the following, without so much as a please or do you mind. The kid says, get in the back. I want to sit in the front. Now let me repeat, there was no hi mom, how was your day, nothing. It was pretty much, get out, go to the back. Now the other teachers and I just looked at each other and we pretended we didn't see anything, as the mom immediately gets out, opens the back door, and she slid inside. They both had to be aware that several teachers witnessed what unfolded. Like, was this behavior so commonplace that neither the mother or the child realized the impact of what happened? I'd worked with this boy all year. He was politeness itself, his manners were impeccable. He was a good student, and his mother was no wimp. She told me she was a doctor at the local hospital. I wonder how their relationship unfolded at home. We teachers only saw this boy at school, and he didn't so much as cause a ripple. At home though, he obviously ruled the household with a heavy hand. What a crazy bratty kid. Like, if I did that to my mom, first off, she'd laugh in my face that I'd even dare try to tell her to move. And secondly, I'd be walking home after that, there's no question about it. Do you guys remember that kid that was on Dr. Phil years ago? The one who kept slapping his mom whenever he didn't like what she said? I really hope it's not like this at home. But, who knows, mom could have been having a bad day at work and she was like, you know what, F it, he can have the seat today, I don't want to deal with this annoying kid. I'm a retired police officer, and I listened to these stories, and I knew I had to share one. Now, I've dealt with many entitled people over the years, and I've heard everything from I know Captain so-and-so, and don't you know who I am, to why did you stop me? I did nothing wrong. But this one girl, I really had to shake my head at. Around evening, I once stopped a car for speeding that had a very attractive young female in it. She was dressed to the nines, rushing to get to dinner with her friends. As soon as I approached her window, she copped an attitude and she starts talking all this sovereign citizen stuff like, You have no right to stop me. I'm very late to an important dinner. I told the young lady all I needed was her license and insurance, and I'll let her be on her way. She did not want to give it up at first, arguing that she wasn't speeding, but she did eventually give it to me. While I was talking to her, she dials frantically on her cell phone talking to a few different people. She finally hands me her cell phone and tells me that her lawyer wanted to talk to me. And if I didn't let her go, my job will be in jeopardy, as her father is a high-powered attorney, and he knows the head captain of where I work. And yes, she used the words, I know your captain from where you work. I know she was lying and decided not to even press it because I didn't want to deal with her for too long. 
She then kept screaming at me to talk to this person on the phone and that he'll get it sorted out. I responded by taking the cell phone and ending the call by turning it off and then put it on top of the car. When she saw me doing this, she immediately flipped out, started calling me every name in the book. I told the girl if she didn't cooperate, she would be arrested for failure to ID, her car would be impounded, and she would be booked to the county jail, and her late dinner will become no dinner. And this is when she coughed up her license and insurance. Now, when anybody would get smart with me, I would always check them for warrants. I checked this girl for warrants, and she had about $4,000 worth of traffic warrants. So the end result is I wound up impounding her car and booking her into the county jail. She literally told me that she refuses to go to jail as she has things to do today. You read that right, she has things to do today. Well tough luck sweetheart, that's not how it works in the real world. She then starts crying and screaming that her daddy will sue the crap out of me so hard that I won't even have a house to live in anymore. The sad part was that she was only going 8 miles per hour over the speed limit. In situations like this, I usually wouldn't even write someone a ticket unless they were going 10 above or more. But when this entitled girl started off with giving me issues, I start looking harder. I would have normally just given her a verbal and she would have been on her way. No ticket, just a warning. But this girl talked herself into getting arrested, having her car impounded, and plus, I ended up giving her the speeding ticket. Wow, talk about super duper entitled. It's next level with this girl. I refuse to be arrested because I have things to do today. Like, oh my freaking goodness. Like, how do people end up with such a sense of self-entitlement? So this story happened two and a half years ago. I was 15 at the time, and now I'm 18. This incident occurred due to my skin condition called vitiligo. Basically, white patches appear around your skin in sometimes interesting patterns. It's caused me horrible years full of teasing, severe mental issues, and I've mostly gotten out of it by early 2018. So on this day, I first saw Karen while waiting to board a plane. However, I didn't interact with her until a refueling stop, some 5 to 6 hours later. The flight departed between midnight and 1am, so obviously we flew in the dark, and most people were asleep or trying. We landed during daybreak, and we weren't allowed to leave the plane. I was sitting beside my siblings who were sleeping, playing something on a tablet, when Karen and her two kids walk by to use the lavatory. Out of nowhere, Karen's son says, Look mom, what happened to her? Now, the woman paid no mind, she just pulled her kid to the lavatory. Then on the way back, Karen says, Uh, you seem to attract a lot of attention to how you look. You're scaring my children. My mom from across the aisle heard and said, Is there a problem? Karen then tells her, If you're the mother, tell her to cover up. It's scaring my kids. At this my mom says, You're not gonna tell me how to raise my daughter. Now please get back to your seat and leave us alone. Or I'm calling the flight attendant. With that, Karen stomped off with her kids. Five to six more hours, my destination. After going through the airport, visa, baggage stuff, and other stuff like that, we were headed to the bus, which was gonna take us to a hotel. And guess who was on the same bus going to our resort? Yes, Karen. However, she didn't cause any scenes. A little while later, we finally reached the hotel. And guess who left the bus as well? If you've guessed Karen and her family, you're correct. I haven't seen Karen's family very much, other than knowing that my little siblings, brother 4 and sister 6, have fell in quite well with Karen's kids. They played together and talked together. Skip forward a few days. I went with my siblings into the sea. We obviously were in very shallow water. After some time, Karen's daughter and her son comes as well, and the five of us began playing and goofing around. The daughter and son could have been like 7 and 8 years old, and they both didn't seem bothered at all by how I looked. And then along comes Karen. With almost no people near, she saw it as a chance to remind me of the past years. Karen says, What are you doing here with my kids? I say, Uh, nothing ma'am, we were just playing here. Is it wrong? Karen says, Yes, it's wrong. Look at yourself. They're gonna have nightmares because of you. And you are contaminating the ocean. I tell her, they don't seem bothered about me and it's not contagious. Karen says, I don't care. People like you should not go on holidays. You should have stayed at home. Now cover up. I sent my siblings to get my parents who were at the bar. And I tell her, please ma'am, leave me alone. I'm not happy with it either. Just please leave me alone. 
She then comments saying that I shouldn't even be wearing a two-piece. Now, at this point, I'm in tears, and I'm telling her to please go away. I don't like it either. I just want to be left alone, and I won't bother her. Karen then says, No, not until I talk to your parents, who thought bringing you to a beach is a good idea. At this point, I ran off, in tears, past my parents, who are now headed to confront Karen. My parents and Karen then got into an argument, which attracted quite a lot of attention. I'm keeping the rest for myself, for the sake of not sounding too familiar to someone, and to keep this short. After that, the daughter and son weren't allowed to play with my siblings. However, I didn't get any more looks from Karen, and her husband apologized profusely when he met me by the pool, before the flight home. Today, a much bigger part of my body is affected, yet I've never felt better about how I look. Guys, what an absolute monster that woman is. Shaming somebody like that, especially a teenager. Like, some people's entitled attitudes never cease to amaze me. And we can only hope that karma gets her one day, and she develops vitiligo too, to know what it feels like. Wouldn't that be the ultimate lesson? On this day, I was invited to a co-worker's house, as we had a project we were working on together for a course that we were both taking for work skills. It was on a Saturday afternoon, and she had worked the night shift the night before. We're both nurses. I had never met her husband or her children, who were about 5 and 3 at the time. Her husband was a milk delivery guy, who worked Monday to Friday and had weekends off. She worked shift work, full time, and she actually made more money than he did. So I get there, and he was sitting in the living room watching television, while the kids played in the spare room where the toys were. Every time there was a scuffle, instead of dealing with it, he would scream, Manjeet, deal with children, and she would excuse herself to go deal with it. She seemed really tired, and she told me that she had gotten home from a 12-hour shift and not slept because she had to look after the children, even though their dad was home not working all weekend. The last straw was when we went to the kitchen to get a snack. He holds up his whiskey glass as we're walking by, from his perch on the sofa where his ass was obviously glued for the day. He shakes it and then grunts. She then goes over wordlessly, takes the glass, pours the ice and whiskey in it, and hands it back without saying a word. The whole time, he never looks at her and never says thank you and barely acknowledges her presence. It took all the strength I had not to go over and cuff him across the head. I know this is perhaps a cultural thing, but that doesn't make it right. As soon as their youngest turned 18, she left him. Unfortunately, because he'd kept her name off the house and everything else, she had to fight so hard to not lose everything. I've never seen a more entitled prick in my life, and I'll never forget him shaking that glass and how hard it was for me to not inflict violence upon him. So, two years ago, I got pregnant for the first time. Chris and I told our families, and Rory, my father-in-law, was overjoyed at the idea of a grandchild. He gave me and Chris a check for a thousand pounds. He said this was to pay for a nursery, and the rest should be kept safe until the baby was 18. Shortly after this, when I was about 12 weeks, I had a miscarriage. We tried to give Rory his money back, but he asked if we were going to try again. We said someday, but not anytime soon. Rory said to put the money into a savings account and add to it, so when we do have a baby, we have the money for it. Husband and I agreed, and after we made the account, we deposited the check, and we tried to put in about £10 per week. As it's been two years of regular topping up, the account currently has around £2,500 in it. We've missed a week here and there, but we've never taken money out of it. We've both have been to therapy, and we agreed to try again. I'm currently four months pregnant. We waited this time until we were out of the danger zone, which is a period where miscarriage rates are higher, before we invited our families to our place and told them over lunch. Everyone seemed really happy for us, except my brother Tom. I pulled Tom to one side and asked why the long face, and he told me that he knew about the baby fund and he had been intending to ask me for it. So in the conversation after that, my brother Tom said his son, Sean, is going to university in a couple of years. He's 16 now, and Tom doesn't feel that the maintenance grant will be enough for Sean to live comfortably. I said that Sean could get a job, and Tom said he doesn't want Sean working through A-levels in case it affects his grades. Tom also said that he and his wife, who are both in their mid-30s, had Sean at a time when they would have gone to university, so they couldn't go. And because of this, it's important to them that Sean goes. He figured as me and my husband are on a £10 an hour, and Tom and his wife are £9 an hour, this means that we automatically have money to burn. I replied that the baby fund was, shockingly enough, for my baby. Tom then said, I figured since you, you know, the last time, that this one's not a done deal yet, that 
I could take the money? I told Tom no, and then he immediately told Kelly how I was refusing to give them the baby fund. And now both Tom and his wife are mad at me because, quote, Sean needs the money and we're family. Now, Sean didn't even know that Tom was asking me for the money, or that the money even existed. To this day, the only people who ever contribute to the baby fund are Rory, with his starter money, and myself and Chris, with our £10 a week and bonuses. We don't even consider that money to be ours anymore. And even when Chris and I were in dire straits and we could have really used that money in the fund, we still didn't touch it, because as far as we're concerned, that's our baby's money. My brother Tom and his wife have had 16 years to save up. Me and Chris have never taken a holiday, and they go on two per year, and when they realize they have no savings left, they decide to try to take the money that's from mine and my husband's baby, while telling me that there's still a chance that I will miscarry, since I've already done it once. Also, they have a daughter who's about 10, so if I give my current baby fund to Sean, and then start rebuilding, there's no way that 8 years from now they won't ask for my new fund. Neither kid is entitled, and they could both really do with an out to get away from their crazy entitled parents. But if it weren't for them, then we wouldn't even be on speaking terms with Tom right now. Well, isn't that a lovely thing to say to your sister? You've miscarried once, and look, your baby isn't even here yet, so why not give the baby money to my 16-year-old? He needs it more. Like, what a heartless and selfish brother that is. And seriously, if I was OP, that brother would not be coming around my child. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's a malicious compliance where a psycho boss denies OP's vacation time and gets destroyed. Check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.